Hey there, Sabrina here. Such a joy to see you again. I apologize for my absence last week. The enemy was lying to us and telling us that we were sick, and that's not what God was saying. So praise be to God, we were all healed, we all feel better. So hallelujah for that. The Lord spoke to me recently and said, some of the warfare my people encounter is from befriending people I didn't send to them. Today I'm going to share with you what the Lord showed me in scripture about the kinds of friendships that you should have, the qualities, the attributes that you should be looking for in godly friendships, and the attributes and qualities that you should be avoiding, and the types of relationships that the Word specifically warns us against. I can attest to this Word. The Lord has removed many people from my life that were specifically sent by the enemy to distract me, derail me, get me out of character, delay me, and cause things to happen in my life that should not have happened. I'm going to start with 2 Corinthians 6.14, and it reads, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And a lot of people get hung up on thinking that they need to befriend everyone in order to bring them to Christ. But that is opposite of what God's Word said. That's not why we're here, by the way. We're not here to befriend the world. We're here to minister to the world. We're here to show love to the world and win them with the love of Christ. But when we become friends with the world, we start to compromise you are more likely to go along with someone that wants to make you do something opposite of God than somebody who is living a life opposite of God is willing to do something that you want to do that will lead them to God. So this is why we have to be so careful with the friendships that we keep. The book of Proverbs gives us so much wisdom on friendships. The man of too many friends, chosen indiscriminately, will be broken in pieces and come to ruin. But there is a true loving friend who is reliable and sticks closer than a brother. So sometimes too, when you surround yourself with a lot of people and you think that having more friends is better, that can actually cause a lot more problems in your life. And it's very hard to find that one good true friend that will be that godly friend that will drive you to, to seek out God more and causes you to seek holiness, righteousness, living morally, and all those wonderful things. Having that one friend is far better than having a group of friends that lead you away from God. The word also says, do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good morals. You notice how that verse starts out, do not be deceived, because God knew that we would be deceived into thinking that we could be friends with the world. But he's saying very clearly, do not be deceived. When you have bad company, it will corrupt your good morals. And I'm sure that you've experienced this at some point in your life. I can attest to this. Just, I'll give an example here. I had a friend many years ago when I was just beginning to come back on full fire for Jesus. And this friend claimed to be a Christian, but looking back, she really wasn't. She was very worldly. She didn't have a prayer life. She didn't worship, praise, and all that. So there wasn't really a relationship there. It was more religion-based. But she despised my husband. And it wasn't even really her. It was a spirit that was operating through her. And she would make these side comments and these disparaging comments about him all the time. Excuse me. I bind every evil thing that is trying to come against my voice right now in the name of Jesus. And it was after a while, it would start to affect me and it would start to make me question things. And it would also create a lot of arguments and fights within my marriage. And this is an example of a worldly friend that was not leading me towards God, but she was instead trying to meddle in and destroy my marriage. And so this is what I mean when keeping worldly friends is dangerous. It's dangerous for the will of God in your life. Eventually I offended her and then she no longer wanted to be friends with me, but <laughs> that's okay, you know? The Lord knows and he will remove those who he sees are hindering you. Proverbs 27, 6 tells us a true friend corrects out of love and concern, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful because they serve his hidden agenda. And so a lot of times what you will see in worldly friendships are these hidden agendas. 
People want to self-serve. It's all about them. What can I get from this person for myself? What can I take? That's what it's become. It's all about how much can I take from them? And they're not interested in giving to you. I know you've had people take advantage of you. I certainly have. And this happens when you have a pure heart. When you have a pure heart, the wolves pick up on it. The wolves can smell a pure heart. This is what the word tells us to look for when we're looking for godly friends. Iron sharpens iron. And by the way, for all the verse references for each of these qualities, they will be listed for you below in the description box. So iron sharpens iron. You want to look for someone who is going to sharpen you. You want to look for someone who is pointing you to the Father, who is sharing revelation, who is sharing insight, wisdom with you, helping you grow closer to God and spiritually mature. A godly friend loves at all times. And if you really want to understand what love is, I would highly recommend reading 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. And that will show you the qualities of love, the actions of love. If you don't have a friend who is showing you those actions, then they're not showing you love. A godly friend encourages and builds up. That's what you are supposed to do as a friend. Encourage and build up, strengthen, you know, lead them on an upward path. And there are some friends who lead people on downward paths. Never understood it, but I've had them. You also want to walk with the wise. Now this is so profound because the Bible warns us to be very careful of the company we keep, right? If you're walking with the wise, you're going to become wise. If you're walking with fools, you're going to become foolish. And so you have to be very careful with the people that you surround yourself with because who you hang out with is who you will become. And the other one that he tells us is to avoid wrathful people. So. <laughs> I'm not talking about people who are working on it, okay? There are some people who've had a problem with rage their whole life, anger, and they come to Christ, and it's a real struggle to get through it, okay? I can attest to this. But if you have a friend that is not seeking after Jesus and just not going that direction, and they are so hateful and rageful and wrathful, if you hang out with them, those qualities are gonna hang, are gonna rub off on you. I mean, it's going to happen. It's bound to happen. Godly friend will lift you up when you fall. And this is the problem with some worldly friends is that they secretly wait on some people to fall and act like they're there to help them and lift them up, but then they go behind their back and they disparage them and they gossip and they slander. And this is why we have to be so careful of the company that we keep and the friends that we entertain because it could be causing more harm than good. The word also tells us to outdo one another with kindness. And I love this because it's such a beautiful example of how to show the love of Christ. And not only outdoing one another with kindness, but also correcting kindly. You can correct someone without being hateful, nasty, or cruel. And this is something that worldly friendships lack. And yeah, but anyway, if you are set on outdoing your friends with kindness, and then they are set on outdoing you with kindness, I mean, it's a win-win right there. Another quality is that godly friends will keep your secrets. Anything that you tell them, you can trust them with. You know that they're not gonna go off and tell someone your business. They're not gonna go gossiping behind your back. They're not gonna backbite you. They're not gonna slander you. You can trust them with the deeper parts of your heart. <laughs> Excuse me a minute. Another attribute of a godly friend is that they are kind, tender-hearted, and forgiving. And these are attributes that show the love of Jesus that you should have in a friend. I had to share this verse with YouTube. I had never read it before doing this study about friendships, but it speaks to me an about another thing to be mindful of with friendships, and so I'll share it with you. It's Proverbs 25, 17, and it says, let your foot seldom be in your neighbor's house or he will become tired of you and hate you. That's wisdom. And there's an old expression that says fish begin to stink after three days. So the etiquette known is that you shouldn't stay at anyone's house longer than three days because they'll get tired of you. But the same is true here. According to the word, it says 
don't spend too much time with your friends because they can end up hating you. And that's the problem I feel like a lot of us make, one of the mistakes a lot of us make is that we spend way too much time with some people and then we end up with problems in our friendships. So we have to find that balance where we're spending just the right amount of time, not too much, not too little. There has to be balance in all of your friendships. And boundaries. If you haven't seen my video on boundaries, go watch it. <laughs> It is not the Lord's will for your life to go out and befriend everyone, to be very careful and wise about the friendships that you entertain because those friendships will determine your path in life. So I hope that this has blessed you today. And if it has, you're always welcome to subscribe and follow for more like this.